Hello everyone, welcome to another video. I'm 3DX and in this video I'm going to be creating in this video I'm going to be creating some stylized glasses. Um eyeglasses I guess. And obviously this one's going to be relatively simple because because it's going to be mostly made out of some cylinders and some cubes. So it's nothing easier than that. So it should be relatively easy to follow. Now I'm going to be making it uh, by just kind of making it a little bit more. Um, some of the shapes are going to be a little bit more exaggerated than you know regular set of glasses. So I do have a reference here, but to be honest, I'm just using it for for general shapes. I'm not necessarily going to be creating that particular set uh, because I'm going to I want to go uh, with a more realistic, not realistic, a more uh, stylized look. So I'm going to keep it relatively simple, as I said, using mostly cylinders and cubes for this. And obviously that technique is called uh, box modeling because you're using essentially a box for the most part. And you're using that in shaping it to get the uh, final shapes. So as you can see here, I also made uh, for the actual glass itself, I made a different cylinder and I applied a different material to that uh, which is going to be using the actual glass uh, material on it I decided to keep it separate from everything else uh, but I think if you can do that as one uh, texture that's perfectly fine as well But in this case, I decided to just keep it as a separate material just to make things a little bit easier. And this is also going to be somewhat low poly. And like I said, I'm going to be mostly exaggerating some of the pieces. I'm not sure how practical uh, this set will really be, but uh, I don't know, I think for a if this was being used for like a stylized uh, video game or something like that, I think I think it would work just fine. But I might be wrong. I'm not a I'm not an expert in glasses. And because we're using mostly geometric shapes, uh, the UVs for this are going to be um, pretty easy for the most part as well. Whenever you use geometric shapes. Uh, doing your UVs just becomes so much easier and this is one of those cases so typically my process for UVs is I apply a planar map on the entire object um, and make sure I made sure I make sure to set the settings on that planar map to be um, uniform I think set it, that's the settings to set it to uniform planar map and then I'm just gonna cut the pieces And then I use the unfold tool and when in the pieces that look kind of straight already I usually use the straightened UVs just so that they are perfectly straight. Now some are not necessarily close to that so I just leave them as they are. And I use the same process for pretty much every single piece. Uh, apply a planar map, cut edges. Now you want to cut your edges um, in areas where the seam's not going to be too noticeable, and also, if possible, uh, where there's like a near 90 degree um, change in the geometry. Now here I'm just trying to use the layout tool to pack. I noticed this part right here could probably just be flat. Um, it's an area of the model where I'm not planning to add a lot of detail, so I'm just going to do that. And it's also going to allow me to pack everything a lot better. And sometimes you can just use the layout tool and it's going to give you some good results. Most of the time I find that it doesn't necessarily do that, but um, so I find that I pack things manually. 
And here I'm going to use uh, a script for renaming uh, multiple tools at once. Uh, there's a link in the video description if you want to get it. Uh, it is an affiliate link, by the way. Um, but if you want, if you don't want to use that, you can obviously rename models uh, just by you know the usual way of manually renaming uh, models. So then I'm going to get the high poly. I'm not going to be taking this to ZBrush. I'm just going to be creating the high poly here in Maya. Um, you know, it's one of those cases where I'm not planning to add a lot of detail or edgeware or anything like that, um, which is why I'm not going to be uh, taking this to ZBrush. It just wouldn't be necessary in this case. So when you're making really uh, low resolution, simple models, sometimes it's a lot better to just create a high poly in your modeling program and not necessarily take it to like a sculpting uh, face like ZBrush. Uh, because you can always just model some of the details. Um, and you know, not everything has to be sculpted. You can always model as well. And this is one of those cases here where I'm just going to, you know, the details that I plan to add, I'm just going to add them here in the uh, in Maya. Now here I'm selecting every other face. I know there's a way to uh, do that. I think there's a script or a tool that can do that. Um, but I didn't have that installed here, so I'm just going to do it manually. And I'm also working in sub D mode for my high poly here. I'm going to be exporting uh, those pieces in sub D. Uh, not everything, but some of the pieces that I want uh, to be the, to look a little bit cleaner, I will be exporting in sub D mode. And when you export in sub D mode, um, Maya automatically just uh, smooths your model when you export it. And I'm going to be exporting this and And I'm going to be baking in Substance Painter uh, using by mesh name. So which is why my low poly models have underscore low at the end and the high poly has underscore uh, high at the end, all the pieces. This one I can bake uh, by mesh name. And you wanna do that when you don't wanna have like um, artifacting going in between different uh, pieces of the model so that you don't get any, I guess, edge bleeding between some pieces. So that's usually what I do to make sure that there's clean, that each piece is clean and it doesn't have any bleeding in between different pieces. And then here I'm going to use, I applied a glass uh, material to the actual glass and then everything else I'm going to use the uh, 3DX stylized material. There is a link in the video description for that. And I'm going to be making a few layers and changing some of the colors. And in this case, I think I'm going to not use the edge uh, layer because I thought it wasn't uh, helping too much. I wanted the colors to be just a little bit more uniform. Sometimes the edge layer kind of messes up with that. So that's the thing I recommend if you're using this material uh, in particular. Sometimes you do have to you know, disable some layers or lower the opacity just, uh, just so that you get the actual results that you're looking for, right? Because you're not going to get the... Uh, um, the final results right away, you're, kind of, you're going to have to change a few settings and add a few layers as well. So I wanted to go with a stylized look on this one, so which is why I kind of experimented with some of these colors. So it's almost like a rubber uh, material. But it's for the most part relatively simple. Alright, so here is what it looks like in Marmoset Toolback, a uh, real-time renderer. Um, so if you like this video, make sure you hit the like button. If you're new to the channel, uh, subscribe to the channel and hopefully I'll be seeing you in a future video. You see this environment right here? I made this really quickly using Maya ZBrush 
Substance Painter and Substance Designer and Unreal Engine. You too can make something like this really easily and in a short period of time. To make an environment like this one, all you have to do is make a few simple props, put them together in Unreal, and then simply add some lights and you're pretty much done. So hey, this is only a 45 second ad, so there's not enough time for me to cover everything. So click on the link below now and I will show you exactly how I made this environment. The best thing about learning how to make an environment like this one is that you can simply use the same techniques to pretty much make any other type of environment. Oh, and by the way, you don't need to be an expert already in order to learn how to make something like this. You can follow along without any prior knowledge. I will be showing you the basics on how to use Maya, ZBrush, Substance Painter, Substance Designer, and Unreal Engine, so you can follow along without any issue. Like I said, this is a very short video, so I don't have enough time to explain everything. So click on that link below and I will show you exactly how this is done. And by the way, I don't know how long I'm going to be doing this for, so click on that link now so you don't miss out.